Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first of all, the invitation for being here. I'm uh, quite glad of uh, being able to to share the, the stage with the, the speakers from yesterday and today. It's quite a, an honor to be here and sharing this space. I'm also presenting for you what uh, uh, we are doing in the lighting laboratory. Uh, so for the ones that do not know what is the lighting laboratory, it's a, it's a educational institution, uh, part of KTH University in, in, in Stockholm and we are running an education there about lighting design and research. So I was asked by Alexander to uh, be able to talk about uh, what are we doing there, uh, how do we see light and how is uh, our direction, where are we heading, how we, how we deal with the lighting research, education and all these, these uh, uh, questions. So uh, I was uh, fascinated yesterday by uh, Colin's presentation about uh, trying to give us an answer of uh, what is uh, lighting design and he gave us uh, a quite interesting presentation and he at the end tell us about the education for him is part of uh, what the lighting design should be about. And as well, uh, Alexander is uh, showing us an example of uh, uh, what is light. So he, she has been around asking some very important people in the, in the business, in, in the art field, um, in lighting, about what is lighting design, uh, what is light, basically. Uh, many different answers. And uh, I have done this uh, previously, uh, trying to also uh, explain a bit what is uh, lighting design. And uh, we can find uh, from these different uh, organizations, institutions, associations, uh, PLDA, which is not longer existing, IES, CIE, IALD, Bismarck University, Hawk, and KTH, they have their own definition of what is light and design. And I would like to point out that uh, in some of the definitions, you can find these two words. Light and design is something related to art and science. and. Uh, is basically something that you can find when you want to establish what is architecture, is something between light and science. And uh, since I was studying architecture and I had this uh, debate with the uh, teachers or uh, classmates, we never find out a, a common uh, uh, decision of is it more art, is it more uh, uh, science related. So I think this is the same with lighting. So I won't uh, start this discussion because we might not never uh, finish. So if we take this apart and you come up with your own decision if it's more art or science, I think that we should focus more on the other part of this description of this definition of what is light and design. And we can see that there are very important words that if you take it out of, of this uh, uh, paragraph, uh, it's about a uh, professional, it's about the human environment, uh, successful conclusions, uh, lighting community, quality lighting about the public, uh, professional organizations, cooperation, very important, exchange of information, technology, photobiology, color, vision, creating a better world, having some universal, uh, universal acknowledgement of the professional uh, field, uh, power of light, as we have been, uh, Gustavo has been explained, uh, shaping the human life, shaping the architecture, the urban environment, emotions, visions, so, so on and so forth. So many things that are related within what is lighting design, and I think this is the most important part of our profession uh, as lighting designers to understand that all of this is part of, uh, of uh, lighting design. It's not really understanding if it's more related to art or to science, but really focusing on these ideas. Uh, so I will explain a little bit for us in the light laboratory what we do again, and. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, in order to be able to have uh, this uh, very good uh, uh, practice, uh, we, we need to have a very important platform. And KTH University provides this very important <coughs> platform that is in Swedish, uh, that means art and science, as uh, the description before were uh, describing. But also we are part of the architecture and built environment where lighting is actually affecting the most. But uh, not only that, we as the lighting laboratory need a very specific focus. And that focus for us is as in our uh, logo or our center uh, 
text mentions is about uh, a human-centered philosophy. So we really focus on human and we try to teach the students to focus on this human um, perspective. And uh, we, ha we can see nowadays, we have been thinking about this in the, in the lighting laboratory since the laboratory has been started uh, it's approximately 16 years ago. And this has been our, always our motto, the human-centered uh, philosophy. But nowadays you can find that uh, some manufacturers, some brands are all also already incorporating this human-centered lighting um, uh, focus in, in their own uh, philosophies, in their own branding. Uh, we can find it with the uh, Glamox and Luxo. We can also find it with uh, Trilux. Uh, if, if you go to the website, if you speak with one of their representatives, they will come out with this human-centric uh, lighting thing. Uh, some of them are more, more complex than others. Some of them are really into circadian rhythm things, activating light, relaxing light, emotional factors. Uh, we also find this in this other company that I found that is also really called human-centric lighting. They actually are producing uh, um, ballast and drivers for LEDs, but they are, because they can control the light in such a way that they are focusing on this, this uh, human-centric thing. Magazines about LEDs, all of these, uh, as uh, we are have sh been shifting from electrical um, uh, lighting into digital lighting with the LEDs, we are able to control them. And uh, in this LED magazine, you can also find this approach uh, that assesses uh, the human-centric lighting. And uh, human-centric lighting luminaires, because they are able to, to be controlled in such a way that they're supposed to support our human uh, factor. And uh, Philips as well is, uh, is uh, creating, is also taken into the human lighting thing, but also uh, incorporating some uh, educational thing. Uh, so they are also spreading the words in, if, uh, in, in these webinars that they are uh, producing. So uh, I really am more than, than happy to, to see that all the industry is already incorporating this human sector factor into the, into the, the philosophies. And uh, last year in the light and building, uh, Fair, there was this kind of tour that you could go through all of these manufacturers to understand what was a, a human-centric uh, luminaire or system according to each one of them. But uh, for us at the Light Laboratory, uh, human-centric philosophy is even more than just creating a product that can be sell or not uh, depending on this human-centric philosophy. So we based our, our uh, fields of action in, in all of this education, collaboration, research, cooperation, and interface. And I will go through each one of them to, to explain you what, uh, how we kind of close the circle uh, when we talk about the lighting design. Um, education. Uh, we internally in the lighting laboratory are are uh, having uh, this uh, master in architectural lighting design. We have another course in light and sketch process with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the building and engineering part of the school. And we have also a daylight course. So this is what we do at the core of our education. And uh, we, we train our students from, from, uh, from a very crucial and very important but and very basic uh, understanding of what is light by observation. So they need to observe and they need to touch and they need to grab and, and, and move around and, and observe light. So we don't really incorporate uh, very uh, deep technological knowledge or uh, scientific facts or theories until the third quarter because we want to be more hands-on. So from the beginning, they are actually dealing with light. So they are free of any uh, uh, attachments uh, related to any, any philosophy or any theory or any uh, technological constraint. So they can really uh, test with light, light sources. And uh, it's a workshop, it's a, it's a place where the creativity flows and, and people are able to develop uh, some very interesting solutions. And uh, it's about uh, these projects are not only being just created for the sake of creativity and being different, this is the result of, uh, of uh, analyzing the space, of understanding the user, of going around, uh, uh, for example, this ex uh, exercise is on a, at the actual school, where they have to go around, find a place in the building where they think something is missing in terms of lighting, something is not working well. 
So they are asking the, their the classmates uh, around, what do you think about this? What are you missing? So they create their own proposals of lighting based on, on those uh, sh very short interviews. So they are actually proposing something that, they, for the, that is needed, not something that is just coming out from, 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 from the head, let's say. Uh, we do it also in, in a bigger scale, outdoors, uh, uh, outdoor installations and these kind of workshops in which we have the same approach where they go ar around, they analyze the site, they, 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 they see what is missing, they ask the people, what are, what are you thinking of this? We don't do it in a very scientific way or in a massive way, like uh, they have a questions, uh, questionnaire for 200 people, but uh, even though they do it for five or 10 people, they can actually start thinking into that direction. So they have uh, this inspiration, how to motivate their, their design proposal, how to motivate what the concept is based on. Uh, more examples about these kind of workshops. And of course, uh, because it's the first uh, activity in which uh, they are really taking care of uh, installing luminaires, they're also very keen on, on exploring color light. Uh, so it's very interesting to see that at the beginning they're really colorful, and, and uh, throughout the course they, they're starting to drop out the color because they understand that light can be powerful even though it's not uh, color light. Uh, they are able to develop uh, complete uh, uh, projects uh, conceptually, very technical as well, so we are not only uh, trying to be in a conceptual stage, so we go in depth, but this is very interesting to notice that we also train them to be critical, so they not trust their own um, ideas or opinion base of, of nothing, or of thin air. They have to, to, to be able to have a critical mind, to develop some, some, uh, some papers, that are actually uh, centered in, in, in also evaluation and questionnaires and uh, with a very professional point of view without the influence of their own uh, uh, very personal opinion, which are of course are important, but they need to fa uh, base their, their results in facts. Um, another very important thing, uh, if we uh, jump out of the only of the educational frame, is the collaboration we have with other institutions, with other universities. And uh, we're asked uh, from different universities, schools, or, or institutions to give some courses uh, with very different topics, uh, as a light as a curatorial tool, a lighting seminar for the architecture school, a luminar design university, and so on, a uh, light for artists uh, course, uh, go also going abroad as a guest critique, so we are really into collaborating with the, with different parts of uh, with different institutions, with different uh, actors in, in the academia, and uh, this is one example of a collaboration we did. Uh, there's this uh, this fantastic space that was uh, uh, temporarily uh, built in, in in Stockholm, the main campus in KTH where this is a platform for research. Uh, they want to, to, to have this building where the questions are asked, where the uh, research can be tested. And we were asked in collaboration with the photonics department to create a lighting proposal for this, done with the students, of course. And uh, together with the, um, with the lighting solution, uh, uh, there was a series of seminars uh, taking different from people, not only from the lighting design world, but also from the energy agency in Sweden, from the photonics department, from the architecture, from the art perspective. So there was a very rich collaboration with very different people in order to uh, approach the, the topic of light and lighting. And uh, as well, uh, this is uh, something that I consider very important. Uh, it was a workshop done at the, uh, the energy agency in Stockholm. Uh, and I think it's important because um, Commonly, uh, the energy agency is only uh, focusing on the saving of energy, but we, we managed to create this workshop in, in this corridor inside their own offices, in which the participants will be able to, def to, de to develop a very quick uh, uh, exercise on a given model. This is a, uh, this is a model, and this is the, the actual corridor, in which they could test with the small sources and then implement it for real within two teams this is the other proposal in the same corridor, just to understand what is the power of light and not only focusing on, okay, I have so many luxes or so many watts uh, using in this space, so uh, the participants can understand that the light can change the space, can light can change the perception of it. Uh, here, uh, we're not judging if it's a, it's a good solution or if it's nice or if it's pleasant or not, but just about how the space can be transformed with light. 
Uh, and then also collaboration uh, in the previous uh, projects, so we have a lot of support, uh, uh, basically with the energy agency on the Dome of Vision with this other company, NCC. Well, in this one was a very interesting project from, from a master student from the art school on, in, in Stockholm. And uh, there is this very uh, emblematic um, tunnel for pedestrians and, and bikes in the, in the center of, of the city. And uh, I, I was uh, collaborating with him in order to develop just the, uh, the light solution of his conceptual idea. And the idea was to, to, to bring this tunnel into darkness uh, for uh, some hours, only on one day, 21st of December, uh, in order to represent this, uh, this step of uh, coming from the darkness, from the winter, and stepping into the light. So it was like the light at, at the end of the, of the tunnel. There was no, almost no budget. It was really for the sake of helping this, this very interesting project and working in such a spectacular space that is actually something that is not easily, uh, cannot very easily be done. We had a support from, from, uh, from the police and from the Stockholm community, municipality. And uh, at, the, at the end, it's something very simple but very powerful. Uh, and again, it's, uh, it's about uh, communicating to the people what is the power of, of the light. Uh, then we have also um, research. These are some of the projects that uh, have been done uh, within the, uh, the, the years. And uh, for in order to do the research, we need to, to somebody uh, come with us and tell us. We, we are interested in, in finding the answer to this question. We want to know this or that. And we need to, 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 to bring money in, funding, in order to develop this research. So somehow it has been working. It's, it's not that easy. But uh, it's, it's working so far. And, if, and uh, we're working to, to get more into research. Uh, to find uh, answers to very interesting questions. Uh, for example, this, this project uh, was commissioned by the, by the road administration in, in, in Sweden. Uh, there, there is this project about creating a, um, a, a, um, a tunnel uh, that uh, goes around the city so you don't, you don't need to go through the city and avoid all the traffic. Uh, it's a new, well, it was a complete new project, so they were interested in understanding, okay, what happened if we install LED lighting, of course, and in the current tunnels they have these solutions with, uh, with uh, high pressure sodium lamps. So they were interested in knowing how much energy they, 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 could, uh, they could save. But uh, for us that was not the most in important or the most interesting thing to test. The, the idea was to know, okay, uh, given the regulations, we need to have a certain level of, uh, of luminance and uh, we need to know if by changing just the technology, we can actually also reduce the light levels, uh, keeping, keeping the, the, the safety and, 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 the, and the good uh, visual conditions and uh, even be able to, to save a little bit more of energy. Uh, so it was uh, considered to be a project that uh, it was not just change uh, light sources and safe energy, but uh, is completely related to the performance and uh, how the space is perceived. Of course, it's a very specific condition. It's a driving tunnel, uh, long distances, and it was only aimed to, to have the evaluation at the core of the tunnel, nothing related to the entrance and the exit of the tunnel, which these are very special uh, things to, to be, to be uh, researched and, and, and designed. So, um, together with the collaboration of the traffic uh, road administration and uh, the students, uh, we were able to measure. And what we basically were doing is uh, giving some, some uh, luminance uh, cameras and some software in order to be able to catch some luminance photo photographs and see how much light is, is, uh, is being catched by the, by the surface. And we were comparing uh, the, 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 let's say, all technology, high pressure sodium lamps against LEDs. Uh, and the basis was uh, the given uh, high pressure sodium installation is uh, given, uh, we needed to comply with five candelas per square meter in order to be on the, on the safe side and in a road that is uh, supposed to be uh, not over 90 kilometers per hour. 
and, uh, and we, were not, we were not interested in knowing the reaction factor because that was not our goal. We were really interested just in, in understanding the visual performance of the driver. Uh, um, so we had some, some plates uh, with numbers, some plates with color, we were changing them, and uh, we measured with the high pressure showed them, okay, at so many meters from the, from the actual car, uh, we needed, we were driving, stopping, and, and, and at this distance, I can understand the numbers and I can understand the colors. And then we did the same with the LEDs, and at so much distance, I can understand the plate and I can understand the colors. So, because uh, the LEDs has a better color rendering, just only because of that reason, uh, we were able to to uh, identify that uh, with uh, low by lowering the levels of light, uh, we were we were bringing uh, trying to match the same distance in which we were able to identify these these plates. Uh, and 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 keep the, the safe uh, factor in, on, in place. So that was a really good uh, experiment to to be able to demonstrate that by improving the quality of light, uh, you can still lower the levels because as well there is so much light in these tunnels, uh, and and. It's not only because of the energy savings, it's also because of the visual comfort. You don't need so much light when you improve the quality of light in order to, to have a proper vision. Uh, there is this other project in which there were so many uh, people taking part of and collaborating. The Stockholm uh, uh, Municipality, Firehull, Tritech, Sustainable Innovation and us. And the and the the goal was to create an installation in this in this path. It's so a pedestrian path in front of uh, the water, uh, and and uh, we're using this kind of technology, a, a, a lamp pole, also with LED technology, some sensors and some communication uh, hardware, and also the software that we we were able to control the lighting in this pedestrian uh, path. And uh, the important thing is that we were not focusing our part as KTH light laboratory. We were not focusing on this side. Oops. Uh, how I go back there? We were not focusing on this part of the of the research because that was already taken care of by by these other companies involved. We were taking care of this part, the social and the sustainability part, by by. Uh, creating the settings of how this uh, distribution of lamp poles and dimming up and dimming down would work in order to have uh, uh, an economical and friendly environmental and like coherent co social um, environment and also taking care of the perception, the safety and the visual comfort. Uh, very different scenarios were tested and um, and the idea was, uh, or there were some questioners asking in all these very different scenarios in which uh, safety, visual comfort, perception, and were were evaluated in, with some answers that were taken from from the people that are actually using this path. How is the energy consumption depending on the different settings of of these uh, uh, four different or five different scenarios? Number zero is is with no control at all. And uh, what wha what basically was. Uh, we um, wanted to avoid the feeling of, of feeling exposed under the light. We wanted to avoid the, 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 uh, the feeling of, 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 okay, if I'm walking here, one light is popping up and the other one is, is, is switching off. So you feel like something is happening. And it's, it's kind of uh, not, uh, it's disturbing for, for, the, for the people working in this path that lights are going off and off and then you don't really don't feel safe. So. Uh, the whole the whole evaluation consisted on planning uh, 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 a strategy in which the user was under let's say this middle pole, and three poles ahead of you and three poles behind you were also matching your 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 trajectory in this path. So you were uh, because you have these three poles ahead and, and behind, you never realized that the light was going up and down, and you were always feeling that you were walking with the light. Uh, so what basically is happening? It's uh, the pole is on there, but you don't see the person. The, this second pole is on, you don't see the person again. Now the person is passing by. And then once this person is, has passed these two poles, they are still on. 
and now when he's in this other in, in this other part of the path, these ones start to be switched off. So there's always this uh, accompanying. Uh, this light is is going together with you without being uh, uh, disruptive to your to your uh, feeling of, of walking in darkness or the light that are changing. And uh, this has a very nice response, a very positive response from the people using the path that they were actually feeling very safe. They were not noticing that the lights were changing, they were dimming up or down. And uh, uh, depending on the timing and the sequence, we, we, we managed to create a, a very energy efficient uh, solution because the lights are not on all the time at 100%. You can dim it down a little bit and, uh, and be able to save that energy when the passage is not being used. And at the entrance and at the end of, the, of, the, of this, uh, this path, uh, there will always more intensity in order to mark the beginning and the end of, of the path. And it was so successful that this continued in two other projects uh, in on, on two different uh, locations, also in, in, in Stockholm. And the interesting thing about this, this one here is that it, it, it was uh, introducing also solar panels. Uh, and the, 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 the reason of why introducing solar panels is because uh, this is uh, a, an area that is belonging to, to the royal family and it's, it's not easy to build something and, and it's uh, protected and you have a forest there so they don't want to go in and, and dig some, some, some holes in order to connect the luminaires. So that was the reason of using the solar panels. But basically it's using the same principle of light going together with you and saving, and saving energy. Another uh, research uh, project was done in, an, in, a, in a hospital, uh, eye hospital, in which, uh, uh, as uh, weird as it sounds, the lighting conditions in, in, the, in, the, um, in the consultories or in the office of the doctor were really poor, and this person is supposed to be testing your eyes, your vision. And uh, this was the existing solution, of only with one central light on, on that is giving light to the whole room, and here, uh, the idea was to analyze how the space is being used, uh, how the doctor is moving, how the instrument are used, how the patient can be moved from here and there, and what kind of, what kind of evaluation the doctor is, is, is giving to the patient, how much light is needed, where the doctor is focusing, where the, the patient is focusing. So in order, and, and, in real, and uh, depending on all that evaluation, understanding how the space can be used, uh, some an, uh, understanding uh, was created, some, some uh, analysis of the actual light distribution of the current situation were done. So at the end, we could propose something that uh, was just, f is, this is not the ultimate uh, ideal uh, solution, but it's just one example of how you can uh, uh, give a solution to, uh, to a space like this and improve the quality of, of, of the working conditions of the doctor, the quality of the visit of the patient, and also at the end, be able to have uh, some energy savings as well. You, you have more quality, you are using less energy because you only have the light where you need the light, you don't have the light going everywhere, and you are able to, to create a proper working conditions, uh, which are actually very important to, to maintain in no matter which space you are, uh, this needs to be the 100% uh, guarantee. And as well, uh, daylight was considered here into the, into the analysis, the windows, how are they facing, how much light you're getting from, from daylight, how glary is this daylight, some control panels in order to, to avoid this glare. Uh, analysis of uh, what happens if the window is located at the north, south, east or west, because this was a, a, an exercise in order to to influence the future design of the, of the renovation of the hospital, which is actually uh, uh, planned to start uh, the, the planning the, uh, in the ne very near future. But this, this, uh, this research was done in 2012. So it takes a, a little bit of time until the things are, are happening. Uh, then we also have a cooperation uh, we just recently moved our uh, facilities, so this is a picture of everything packed in, in the lighting laboratory. This is the old building, and we have moved to this fantastic building on top of a, a residential uh, house for students. And we have a, 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 a glass house uh, over there with a fantastic view of the city with a dot of daylight in which we are aiming to, to start testing more 
and researching more about daylight. But what we do about cooperation is that the, we have uh, contact with some, some manufacturers in order to be able to, to, uh, to create applications for this space. This is a space that we see as a, as a testing space, a, a laboratory, so uh, it can also work for research and it can work for education and uh, control systems, uh, li lighting facade, uh, uh, occupational sensors and all these kind of things which is still on, on, on the planning process but the, the, the idea is to be able to, to have this cooperation with this industry so we can be able to get their own uh, equipment and, and be able to test it and learn about them and then also give feedback to these to these manufacturers so whatever is working and whatever is not working they can be aware of that uh, this is uh, the interior of the space and um, very flexible space. Uh, this is uh, another project we did uh, as a cooperation with the energy agency in, in Sweden. We work also uh, had the, the, the cooperation of uh, IKEA and uh, this, this was happening at a very important event in, in Sweden called uh, Almedalen and this is a, a platform where uh, uh, many, many politicians and important institutions go and gather in this, in this uh, period of time, I think it's one week, to discuss important topics for the, for the future of, of what is going to happen in, in Sweden. So, uh, we were invited to create an installation, uh, kind of an artistic installation, even though we are not artists, but uh, that was kind of the deal. And uh, so we got some support from IKEA to get some, some light bulbs, like the ones you see here. And this is the location, it was a park, and it was together with a conference and, uh, about uh, energy savings. And the whole, the whole uh, background of the frame of this is on this idea of uh, uh, something called uh, Global Lighting Challenge. And this Global Lighting Challenge has the aim that for 2030, uh, there, there has been a distribution of, uh, of 10 billion high energy bulbs around the world. So, uh, so the energy consumption can be reduced and also the aim is to bring more uh, um, lighting energy to places that at the moment they don't, don't have. So this is the frame of, of, the, of the installation. So the idea was to create these, these uh, panels with the, with the word uh, now, uh, like, uh, like a reminder of uh, you have to take the action now. You have to do it now in order to be able to, to have an, an impact in the future and, uh, and be able to be conscious about the, how the energy is used and how the lighting is being, is being used. And uh, we were using uh, some very simple sensors, just present sensors. So when you were standing in front of the panel, it was switching now. And when you walk a little bit ar uh, away of it, it was switching off. So it was really a, a double uh, um, reinforcement of now, now it has to happen. So this is the, the, the video of how, uh, of how it works. People were really, I don't know, interacting with this, uh, going in front, is, is switching on, switching off, uh, going around, and, and I think the message was clearly uh, communicated. Very simple, it's not sophisticated, uh, it's IKEA products, uh, and, uh, and I think uh, it has a, a, strong, a strong meaning, a, a strong message is, is delivered. This is a time lapse, so it's, it's not as fast as, as it looks here in the, in the video. And then we have also cooperation with the some municipalities. Uh, uh, very soon, in two weeks, we're going to, to, to start a, an, an installation with the students and a workshop in a, in a city one hour away from, from Stockholm called Eskilstuna. And we're going to be part of this like kind of mini light festival. And the municipality of uh, Eskilstuna and all these actors, these, all these manufacturers are providing support in order to make this possible. 
And again, in this, in this, in this case, the students go around, analyze the site, uh, try to get uh, contact uh, uh, as little as, as, it, as it is, but at least they try to get in contact with the, with the, with the, with the people around in order to create their concept, their idea, and develop a proposal, uh, a solution. These are the sites that we are going to light up. There are five sites distributed uh, around the, the, the central station of Eskilstuna. And uh, the idea is for them to learn about the urban environment, something that uh, Gustavo was uh, talking uh, about, uh, understanding how, how people move, how, what is the influence of this specific site, of this specific activity on that specific part of the city, and how can this be enhanced, how can this be solved, how can this be communicated. And uh, we have based all of this in, in, in Kevin Lynch principles about understanding and reading the, the, the city. Uh, what is a llama, what is a path, uh, uh, what, is a, what is a boundary, uh, a node, and all of these factors uh, in the urban fabric and, and, and give an answer to the city according to all of that. So we have a, we have a, a square, we have a courtyard, a church, uh, an underpass, and a school. So it, it's very mixed in order to, to give a different examples of how the lighting or how a city can be transformed with, with lighting. And then we have the interface, in which is something that looks similar to what is happening at this, at this moment. Uh, we, we, we want to, to communicate out what is happening. We want to spread knowledge. We want to invite people to talk about specific topics. So we had uh, last year, 2015, Light Symposium. Uh, we do this together with Bismarck University, which is happening actually in October again in, in Bismarck in, in Germany. Light Symposium, then we will do it again in two years. Uh, lighting seminars, uh, Dome of Vision, some conferences. And uh, here are the dates if you're interested in going to any of those events. And, uh, and the, the idea is to spread the knowledge to, to be able to communicate. Uh, lighting design is not such an old profession. Uh, so we are, we are trying to, to, uh, to get across so, the, uh, so people become aware of what is lighting design in order to, to create a better uh, uh, nocturnal landscape uh, or interior a dark uh, scape. And, uh, but as well, we see these events as a platform to ask questions, as a platform to question the things we are presenting here. So whatever we, we talk about here is one side of the, of the story, and there is another one on the other side where you are sitting at. So uh, it's a platform for discussion, it's a platform for sharing ideas, for, for presenting and, 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 and be able to, to not discuss, but to actually uh, have a conclusion, and, and maybe for the next, for the next meeting we, we, can, we can have an answer for that. And it's important also to be critical in, 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 in what we're doing in, in your own business, in your own uh, um, professional career. So uh, I have thought about this Global Lighting Challenge and that installation we were doing, and I was questioning myself, was this really a good thing to do, actually to promote, uh, uh, to have 10 million high energy bulbs for 2030? So my, my, uh, my vision now, instead of promoting the Global Lighting Challenge, I would like to change the whole idea and promote an, a different Global Lighting Challenge in which the actors are actually light designers, architects, electrical engineers, industry, government, public institutions, universities, and associations. And the campaign will be a campaign for a human-centered lighting design for lifetime. Not only for, for a few moments, it's for, for lifetime, for, for for improving the quality uh, on, on their uh, quality, social, sustainable, and healthy oriented lighting projects. And why? Because it's not enough to focus on our energy savings and reduction of cost and CO2 emissions, but to provide a good lighting environment for the users. So this will be my version of the Global Lighting Challenge. And uh, who will take the challenge? It's uh, these people. The, the, the this is a meeting we had in Frankfurt uh, uh, 2016 with, um, with some former students of the lighting laboratory. So, so these are actually the guys that are going to take this challenge and, and be able to promote and, and develop uh, a better uh, lighting future. 
Um, so that's my uh, presentation. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, I would be glad to, to answer.